Hey everyone, Luke here, aka Stone Mosaic, and I'm here to um, show you what I got at the Tampa Bay Comic Con. Um, went there on Saturday, and um, with the intention of seeing what kind of back issues they had, along with uh, getting some of my issues and trades signed by some of the uh, writers and artists there. And so let me go some through some of these here. Issue of Brave and the Bold. Scott Collins, who penciled the book. Got a signature there. Two of my favorite characters, um, Green Arrow and Dead Man. Cool story by Mark Wade. Uh, this is sort of a, sh a shadow one-shot by Dynamite. Written by Colin Bunn. He was very nice. He um, he um, was glad to see, see, that, see that there were... Um, who are reading this Shadow One Shot? He, um, he, um, if you've been following the news, he's gonna be writing Masks Two for Dynamite with the Shadow Green Hornet, um, a bunch of other pulp characters. Um, of course, it, um, it was written by I believe it was Chris Roberson earlier this year, or last year. Um, but he's gonna be doing that. He said that he has three different timelines that he's gonna be uh, dealing with, and he has essential. A plot device that will help all three stories be told and sort of wrap them all together. He said that it's it, that it's pretty ambitious, and I think he, he said it's only going to be like a, a eight issue miniseries, but it'll be interesting to see what he does. And he also promised that there's some some more of this guy coming soon. Uh, so that was pretty cool. He's very nice. Um, he's not a very humble guy. Appreciative that I I stopped by to get his signature, and then I'm buying his stuff. So it's always nice to see. Um, I actually waited um, the majority of an hour uh, for Mike Grell. He had um, he had some commissions that he was still working on um, in his his uh, ho hotel room, waiting to get them done before he went out onto the uh, convention floor that day. It was a little annoying to have to wait that long, but it was nice to look at uh, some of the uh, prints he had for sale and to um, you know geek out over over his uh, the illustrations, but. Um, so let's see. Actually, his um, he was the only guy who I got autographs from who charged. You get the first item for free. Everything else was a dollar each. So I got six items signed. Cost me five bucks. That's how much. That's the only money I spent on on um, on uh, signatures. Now I think Marv Wolfman was was charging. I think the first three items were free, but then he was charging like three to five dollars. For every item after that, I think Stranko was also was also charging, but I didn't have anything for him, and I figured he'd be busy all day, so I just skipped him altogether. But let's take a look here at what uh, Mr. Mike Grell signed. Got the Wonder Year, which is a yet still to be collected miniseries. Sort of his take on uh, Green Arrow origin. Sorry about the uh, the reflective. Uh, reflection here on the, the video. I got that. I got um, Hunter's Moon, which he did with an, a nice silver sharpie. And of course, Green Arrow, the Longbow Hunters. Uh, let's see what I got here. Uh, Andrew Robinson, who's something I've I've been I'm, I'm relatively new. To his art and what I've seen of it, I've, been, I've really liked. I've followed him on uh, Instagram. Really cool stuff. Andrew C. Robinson, in relation to James Robinson, who wrote Starman. And uh, this is Starman Volume 9. Andrew Robinson did the cover there. Really nice. Looks very, um, looks sort of Alex Ross esque, but maybe a little, little more cartoony, not quite as realistic, but still really nice. And this is the 10th and final. Uh, Starman trade. Again, nice artwork there. I'm really interested to read this series. I've heard great things about it, and I, I found uh, those two trades at my local comic shop for 50% off. So I got them. Got Mr. Robinson to sign them. He, he was also one of the people to sign uh, Batman Black and White number five. He wrote a story in here. And he also, it says, that's his signature right there, and you'll see. Joe and Paolo Rivera, father and son team, who you uh, might know um, from doing um, uh, the 
what used to be the the the, on, the Daredevil ongoing with Mark Wade before it got for uh, uh, he for uh, Powell and Joe left and then Chris Somney joined, um, and they they did a story in this one too. A really interesting story. They drew was written by I believe Ivan Brandon, who um, did a story basically on uh, Batman trying to get into Wayne Manor. He 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 can't get into the secret tunnels. He has to figure a way to get in, and all the traps that he's set for, um, all the traps that he has set for uh, trespassers are kind of being used against him. He's trying to figure out how to how to um, outsmart himself and his own traps to get to get into uh, the Batcave. Uh, a couple issues I'm not going to show because I didn't get them signed. Some of them were by Mark Wolfman. I didn't really feel like spending any more on autographs, and he was charging for a few, although I, I didn't know that he was offering the first three uh, signatures for free, so I'll skip those. Got a, quite a few of those there. I got this issue. Um, I, I brought it to the convention, and I got this, and I want to say six or seven of the 100 Bullets trades to get uh, cover artist Dave Johnson to sign, but I didn't see him there. He didn't respond to my tweet that I sent out to him, so I don't know if he was dealing with the family issue or if he was under the weather. That's why he wasn't there. Or maybe he was just there for, for one day. So that was a little bummer, but what was really neat um, uh, was walking up and down the aisles and seeing all these different comic shops that are from all over the state, even I think there are a few that are from um, out of state as well. Um, and they, they have some really good prices on back issues. Um, and so it was neat to go around, look around, and see what there was. Initially, I thought I would just go to each booth, mark down what they had and what, what price, and try and price compare. Um, but there weren't, there weren't many places that had multiple, that had that had issues I was looking for. So it would usually just be one booth that I, what I was looking for rather than any other booth you know, carried. So um, some, some really good stuff. Um, I don't even remember where a lot of this stuff was bought, but I'm just going to show it to you. And, Give some little commentary here. Uh, I bought a couple of these. This is something I've been interested in. The Batman Shadow of the Bat Annual. See, it's Pulp Heroes. See Harvey Bullock there with Poison Ivy and a looming Batman. This was done by I Glenn Orbic, this um, this cover. And um, I heard that these Pulp Heroes uh, annuals were are, are pretty good. I'm um, not really sure exactly um, what to expect if they're anything like their covers, which is for like a pulp novel with their young romance. I got some other um, some other ones coming up, but it looked pretty interesting. Apparently it was the DC annual theme in 1997. There are some of those. I don't think there are really any themed, themed annuals anymore. Um, but anyway, uh, I've, I've been collecting this in uh, in single issue format, uh, the Spectre 1987 series by Doug Minch, Gene, Colon, Colon. Very nice cover there. Uh, it's actually this cover is actually by Mike Kaluta. Very nice. Um, I think that series was later. I think Minch was later replaced by J.M.D. Matias. I want to say I forget. I know that. Dimitrius worked on something involving the Spectre. He seems to have worked a lot in the um, the supernatural side of, of DC. He's the, he's the Spectre. He's on Justice League Dark. He's just wrapping up uh, Phantom Stranger, which is going to end this month, unfortunately. Um, seems to be something that he's uh, quite adept at. This is a uh, Spectre number four. Cool cover here. Spectre looming large over this guy with the machine gun. Um, there's a really cool place. I think it was called Yancey Street Comics. They had a bunch of relatively new series and new issues, like stuff that came out like literally like the week before, you know, like very recent stuff. And I don't really collect a whole lot of floppies, because especially since new stuff pretty much always gets collected in trade. Um, but something that I, I wanted to get, not because I'm really particularly interested in the series, but because I'm a fan of the writer and I'm interested in the creator and I've seen some of the art. The new Avengers Annual number one by Frank Barberi and Marco Rudy. 
really good stuff here. Marco Rudy has, has like a painted art style. Very nice if you just Google uh, New Ventures Annual. Um, some really interesting stuff here. And I'm interested in Doctor Strange. I don't know if I'll try and track down the Marvel Essentials or, um, or what. But I definitely want to get more into what he's all about before his movie comes out. Which it was announced recently that there's going to be a Doctor Strange movie in production. So... And that, uh, was it Tom Hardy who's going to play him? I forget exactly, but it should be interesting to see. Uh, there's another place, um, and I'm, I'm sorry for blanking on the names, but um, that had a bunch of really good DC Marvel stuff that I I, uh, I picked up. I'll have it for half off or a dollar. So like this right here was five bucks. They gave it to me for two fifty. I really am really interested in the DC Elseworlds. See right there. Batman Reign of Terror. It's sort of a French Revolution um, French Revolution story. It's sort of done like a sort of like a the prestige format with the with actual spine to the book rather than just staple. Interesting stuff. I think they run about forty eight pages. Uh, Batman and Phantom Stranger. Really love both characters. Interesting to see how this turns out. I think I've seen. Um, some pages here and there, but not really sure what to expect, but we'll see. Uh, one year DC had, it, had the the theme of ghosts, where, uh, as I understand it, ghosts from various DC heroes past came back and haunted them, and I think I actually read what this was supposed to be about. It's supposed to be about Abattoir, this serial killer who killed his family, and somehow he's back from the dead to torment uh, Batman. This cover is actually done by Bernie Wrightson, who was at the convention, but my feet hurt, and I had a headache, and I had a very heavy backpack, and I didn't really feel like uh, doing any more, any, any more autograph seeking, so uh, hopefully I'll see him again. I know he had, he had a health care, a, a, a health scare um, fairly recently. Hopefully he, he's feeling better. Uh, let's see, another Pulp Heroes book. This is from, this is Batman. This is Batman Annual number 21. Uh, suspense Detective. Cool cover there. With it. Looks, like it looks like a Chinese dragon there. Very nice. Very pulp. Damsel in Distress. The Dashing Hero. Coming in to save her. Another Batman Annual. I was really looking for Batman and Detective Comics Annuals. To see if they were any cheaper than they were online. This one is the is annual number 13 from 1989. Batman in the Snow there. Um, I was able to find... Oh, there's a 4 issue mini series in the late 80s. 1988. To be specific. And it was a 4 issue mini series of an old pulp character, I think, called the Crimson Avenger. I think he's a pulp character. I was able to find three of the four issues. One, two, and four. They're 25 cents each. Um, I think, and I know where to find issue number three for pretty cheap too. So, looking forward to do that and reading this. So, if there's issue number one, it's an adventure. Issues, this is two. Very nice, they're kind of shadow esque. The, uh, the wide brimmed hat and the mysterious cape. And this is issue number four. So interested in uh, checking that out. Uh, see another Batman annual. This is annual number twelve from nineteen eighty eight. Annual number eleven from nineteen eighty seven. Get uh, I think that's Clayface three. He watched my um, my my previous video on Clayface and on. Um, I think or it was the, it was the the mud pack review. You all know that Clayface had a role there, and uh, interesting villain. Um, I'm trying, trying to find uh, the different um, different issues for this. This is the, the Detective Comics Annual number one, Fables Part One. I think this ran between Detective Comics, The Question, and Green Arrow. Three interesting characters I I, I really love and. It's kind of cool to see that they did a um, sort of um, title title spanning um, storyline. 
says, uh, suggested for mature readers. That's interesting. This is before Vertigo, so they had to mark some of their more mature stuff, but I don't think that they actually did anything that was Vertigo level in terms of violence or nudity or whatever, but I'm fairly new to comics, so that, that could be totally wrong. Another Elseworld annual here. This is Batman number seven. This is the famous or, uh, to some people, infamous um, pirate Batman. Looks interesting. Got it for a buck, so we'll see how it is. Um, another, another Pulp Heroes um, annual here. This is Detective Comics annual number 10. Warrior Breed. Outside there, my greatest adventure. Uh, got that for a dollar as well. There's a um, sort of a, not really elsewhere, but sort of, sort of a mini graphic novel. Batman and Green Arrow, The Poison Tomorrow. Where again, two characters I love. Um, by Denny O'Neill, so we'll see how that goes. Um... Time Warp was a DC uh, anthology series, sort of like fantasy, sci-fi um, uh, genre. That was, I think it was ran, ran in the 60s or 70s, I want to say, and it had a brief revival as a one-shot from Vertigo. Cover here by Eduardo Riso. Interesting. Uh, this was originally eight bucks. I got it for two, so let's see how that goes. I'm a big fan of uh, Jimmy Palmiotti, Justin Gray. They did uh, something for Creator on Heroes where they created this character, Trigger Girl 6, with the art of the always. Okay, sorry about that, guys. I got some weird, something weird going on with my phone with, with space. I've been going on a while, so I'll try and uh, wrap it up relatively soon. Anyway, I was talking about Trigger Girl 6. Phil Noto doing the, uh, the art here. Uh, this was put out. Was this by Image? I forget. Creator on Heroes, basically. So. Jimmy Pomiani, Justin Gray, Phil Noto. Looks interesting. Story about an assassin. Other Elseworlds here. This is Batman, Castle of the Bat. Um, I think this is supposed to be sort of like a take on Dr. Frankenstein. Detective Comics 641, which is the third and final part of Destroyer, in which um, there's a villain trying to destroy all the, the, sky, the skyscrapers that have built, been built up into in Gotham. Uh, I forget. Okay, guys, sorry about all these issues. I'm running out of space on my phone. Anyway, um, this is Batman Irresistible. Um, basically, this guy can like control your mind if you, if you touch his hand or something like that. I, I, I'm not really familiar with what that one's about, but it's Batman, so I'm interested. Sam and Twitch, the writer, sort of like a crime noir type uh, book. These are characters who originally appeared in Spawn, so um, but I'm only getting it because it's a hard-boiled crime fiction. There's Sam and Twitch here. This one was Solent's packaging. Sam and Twitch, book one, Udaku. I don't know if those two issues, if those two trades are related, if they're part of the same series or what, but we'll see. Uh, this is Scene of the Crime. This is actually, I think, the first the first printing of the of uh, the trade by uh, Ed Brubaker, Michael Lark. Interesting stuff on the crime book. Oh, I was listening to an, uh, uh, an episode of the Collected Comics Library podcast. It was really good if you're interested in trades. Um, about Airboy and the host, and he how oh, he really loves the character. And I found this. Uh, this is from Eclipse Books. I got it from half, half off the, the cover price. The Return of Valkyrie. So the Femme Fatale there. There's, there's Airboy in the red. Interesting to see. Love that sort of a pulp genre. Here's an Elseworlds I'm looking for for a little while. This is uh, Justice Riders. The Justice League in the Wild West. We'll trades for the Invisibles. I think this is uh, number six and number four. I'm just trying to grab these whenever I, I find a, a cheap copy and then I'll read it from start to finish. Kissing Mr. Quimper. That weird stuff there. 
And then uh, Bloody Hell in America. Gonna have a trade here. This is uh, Hawaiian Dick. The private eye in Hawaii. Um, supposedly there's supposed to be more of this. There, I think there have been three trades released, but various delays and stuff have set it back, and I don't know if they were going to release more, but I figured I'd get started on that. Uh, got another 100 bullets trade. I think I have, let's see. I think I now have seven of the 13 that were released. This is the counter fifth detective. And accordingly, it is the fifth trade. And finally, last but not least, um, for an $8 copy of the Showcase Presents Jenna Hex Volume 1, which I think is supposed to be um, out of print. I'm not really sure. Um, I was able to find it online for a decent price, and I'm looking for it for a while. I found it for pretty cheap uh, at the show. So lots of good stuff to have. Um, really really good to see um, all the, uh, the creators out there. I think Mike Grell and Colin Bunn and Andrew Robinson, they, they, they do really great work, um, especially. Um, so yeah, definitely, if you've, if, if you've never been to a convention before, definitely go, because if it was anything like this convention, which is a mid-sized convention, you know, they've only been doing it a couple of years, um, you know, you can you can find a, a lot of issues that you're, you're missing for pretty decent prices. They even had a bunch of 50 cent and dollar bins, even some that were 25 cents in a couple places. So if you know where to look and you um, you, you have a list that you want to go off of, you can find a lot, of, a lot of good stuff, even some stuff that maybe you hadn't heard of and you flip through it and it's a decent price. So you go ahead and get it. So uh, very cool stuff. Uh, this is definitely my longest video. Sorry if um, it's a little dry, but you know, I I think I really got some, some great stuff there. I'd definitely go back again. Um, well, maybe I would go with my brother or a friend, you know, because it's, you can be all right with just by yourself, but I think it's nice to have someone else and they can maybe have a, um, maybe they can um, suggest more things to do because I was mainly set on finding these, these back issues, but all in all, really great. Um, like experience, definitely would go again. Um, definitely check out the Tampa Bay Comic Con uh, next year if you're, in the St. Petersburg, Tampa area. Um, yeah, good stuff for, you know, a, a one day pass, you get your book signed, you get um, a whole lot of stuff um, at decent prices, cool back issues that I've been looking for for a while. So good stuff. Uh, thanks for uh, watching my video. Um, and uh, I don't know what I'm gonna review next. So um, I'll just let that be a surprise. Uh, so until then, uh, happy reading guys.